Hey guys, uh, in this video, um, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, the upcoming test. I know you guys are studying hard, especially this is for the uh, the AB students, because um, I know it's their first year and they get kind of kind of worried and scared, and they say, "What do I study? What do I, how do I prepare?" So, um, what I did was, and I got this idea from one of my colleagues. Uh, we started graphing and just kind of noting like the type of questions throughout the years and I started back in 2010 and Just to kind of see what kind of patterns and if you notice You know rate accumulation You know every year you have the table question Okay, the graph analysis and then for a B it makes sense that the graph analysis would be over here because that's a lot of um, you know you, you really can't do that uh, with the calculator that'd be just too difficult because here they're asking for you know um, maximum minimum things like that the first two questions are always um, you know calculator based and so uh, those it, it, it makes sense that they be rate accumulation particle motion area of volume see but I just wanted you to, to take a look at this differential equations. Okay, now hopefully you guys can just kind of glean from this and, and you just pick it apart. But if you notice, um, every year they've had a rate accumulation. Sometimes they've had two back in 2010. And 2020, I just, I just didn't do that one just because I don't think they released the questions and that was just a COVID year and they just kind of screwed everything up. And what's interesting in 2021, they didn't have a rate accumulation question, which is very, very odd. But you've noticed 2022, they did. And every year, mostly every year before that, they've had one. So this just kind of gives you an idea of, you know, the type of questions. Same thing over here with uh, calculus BC, you notice? You know, every year, what is what stands out? <laughs> the last question is always a Taylor series. You are, you're gonna get a graph analysis. You're gonna get a rate accumulation. You're gonna get, look at this, polar or parametric. So it just kind of things to kind of fine tune your focus. So as I'm preparing for the test, you know, I can kind of see, okay, I'm gonna get a rate accumulation, graph analysis. You know, these are the specific ones to focus on. I sometimes I get students ask me, well, do I have to study, um, you know, gosh, uh, I forgot the name, uh, optimization. Optimization hasn't been on there, I don't think, gosh, for years, years. And it's never been there since I've seen it. And students ask me, you know, do I need to study that? If you notice here, related rates, yeah, it's an important topic, but not part, not as part as a part of an, uh, an FRQ. Okay, so hopefully this is kind of gives you an idea of what to to look for. Okay, now what I wanted to do is um, kind of just I know I've done these before, and you know if you can take a look at the other video so that way you can take a look at you know what they're looking for. Okay, what are they asking? So a lot of these when you're doing these. They're gonna ask the same things, okay? So this is a rate accumulation problem from 2022. And something goes in, something probably goes out, and they're gonna ask you for the same, same things, okay? So we have uh, from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., the rate at which a vehicles arrive at a certain toll plaza is given by this function. T is the number of hours from 5 a.m and a of t is measured in vehicles per hour so this already tells me it's a rate of change okay traffic is flowing smoothly at five in the morning no vehicle is waiting in line or waiting in line right but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the total number of vehicles you see that how do you find the total from a rate you integrate how do you find the total number or total value, right? You integrate the rate, okay? Um, that arrive at the top, top plaza from uh, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. 
So all you gotta do, believe it or not, is the integral from one to five of a of t dt, okay? And that's it, that's it. Um, just make sure that, don't forget to put the dt. Okay, now this one is actually worth only one point, um, but make sure to, to state, okay? The total number is given by this uh, integral, okay? So if you were to write this, you would say, the total number of vehicles that arrive at the toll plaza from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. is given by, and then you would write this. You notice how I, 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 I answered that question? Because you know, when they ask you to um, give, an express, uh, give a reason, I just use this. The total number of vehicles that arrive, I use the same verbiage, right? From T1 to T5 is equal, is given by this, and that's it. That's your one point, okay? Number, or letter B. Find the average value of the rate, okay? If you look at other years, they ask similar questions. How do you find the average value of the rate? It says in vehicles per hour, at which vehicles arrive at the toll plaza from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. How do you find the average value? One over B minus A, the integral from A to B of the function, f of x dx. Right, in this case, right, what's A of T D T. So all I gotta do, guys, is one over five minus one, the integral from one to five of A T D T. Now, for those of you taking A B, I mean you guys probably know this, but you know, you, you can just leave it like this, right? Because A A of T is defined here. Um just make sure you put it correctly in your calculator. And uh, let's see here. Well, you should be able to do this. Um, so just in case somebody's struggling with the calculator, you're gonna do um, alpha y equals on your TI-84, one over five minus one. Math nine gives you your integral from one to five. Okay, and then just make sure you put in your function carefully. 450 square root of sine of 0 0.62, 0 0.62x, close it off, dx. Now, even though it says, right, uh, t, you, you guys know you can use x, so, and that's it. My uh, calculator is a little bit slower, but there it is okay so how would you answer this question so the answer is 375.536 now you can just truncate it at uh, three decimal places and and you're fine okay now how would you answer this question because it's a, you have to give a reason okay so this one's worth two points Okay, so uh, you would say the average value, okay, at which the vehicles arrived at the toll plaza from uh, t equals 1 to t equals 5 is given by this, okay? And that's it. I would just use the exact same thing, okay? The average value of the rate in vehicles per hour at which the vehicles arrive from here to here is given by this. And that's it, guys. That's it. Um, but I'm not going to copy this just for sake of time. And this is going to give you two points. Part C. Is the rate at which the vehicles arrive at the toll plaza at T equals 1 increasing or decreasing? And if you look at the other videos, guys, that I go over, when you look at rate accumulation, they're always asking the same thing. Increasing, decreasing. So just be ready for that. And it says give a reason for your answer is the rate at which vehicles arrive at t equals one increasing or decreasing. What, what does this make you think of? That's right, derivative. So now they already give you a of t, right? a of t is equal to, what is that? 450 square root of sine 0 0.62 t, right? So all I have to do guys is I like, 
take the derivative a prime at t equals one. So I'm gonna use my calculator to find the derivative at this point, okay, at, at one. Okay, and then when you do that, you should get 148.947272, all right? That's it. And then, what's your reason, okay? Then you say, since a prime of one, okay, the derivative at one is greater than zero, right? Meaning it's positive, okay? Then you would say the rate at which the vehicle arrives at the toll road, the toll plaza is increasing. And that's it, and I'm sorry, I kind of wrote fast, but and that's it. A lot of times students, they think, oh man, I got this whole big amount of space and I have to write all this stuff. No, you don't. You just keep it short and sweet and to the point. But you just gotta make sure you, you, you show this. But this is, they're gonna keep asking the same, same type of stuff. And if you do that, I think that's a, that'll give you about five points. Because I think part D is worth, uh, the most points is worth four points. But if you have five out of nine, that you're in, you're in a good position, okay? But none of what I've done is, is very difficult, is it? And think about it, they're always gonna ask the same type, of, same type of questions. All right, last one, letter D. It says, a line formed whenever A of T is greater than or equal to 400, the number of vehicles in line at time T between A and four is given by this function, where A is the time when the line first begins to form, okay? To the nearest whole number, find the greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza in the time interval between A and 4. Justify your answer. What does this make you think of? Yeah, that's right. Hopefully, you're thinking max or minimum. Okay. Now, actually, this is actually global max or minimum. Okay. So, this means... And they, they, they ask this all the time. You have to find the, the absolute max, okay? So that means you have to check the endpoints, okay? But remember, how do you do that? Easy. You take the derivative, set it equal to zero, find your critical point, right? And then usually you have your number line, right? And then to find the greatest number of vehicles, you gotta check the endpoints including the critical points, okay? So we start off with this function. So if we do n prime of t, all right? And what happens if I take the derivative of this integral, right? They cancel out, right? So we're gonna take the derivative of this guy. We're gonna be left with a of t minus 400, all right? So if I take the derivative, and you guys should know how to do that. All right, and that's what happens. And then from here, what do I do? I set this equal to zero. So I have a of t minus 400 is equal to zero. That means a of t is equal to 400, okay? So what I have to do, I have to use my calculator and I have to find when a of t is equal to 400, okay? Now remember, they gave you your function, they gave you this. So you're gonna take this and set it equal to 400. Okay, and hopefully you can do that with the calculator very easily. I won't do it just for sake of time, but. Um, and when you do that, you should get the critical points. T is equal to 1.469372. And then the other one, is 3.597713, okay? And <clears throat> that should be your two critical points. Now, I need to find the maximum, right? So I don't, I'm not gonna do the number line because all, all I know is I need to check the endpoints and, 
these two right here okay so we're gonna go ahead and check our function n of t is the integral from a to t ax minus 400 d of x okay and then we're gonna check all right we're gonna check our a our first point we're gonna check b our second point and then we're gonna check our endpoint, which is four. So where did I get these from? So right here, here's my beginning. Here's my end, right, my endpoints. And then here is, um, I guess the middle point right here. Because it says, A is the time when the line first begins to form. So when does it begin to form? Right here at T equals 1.46. Because if you think about it, right, it only happens when a of t is greater than or equal to 400. Well, that's that happens at 1.46. So this is your a, okay, and then this is your b, and then that's your value of the endpoint. Okay, so all I got to do now is basically we put. Remember, this is your t, so you go from a to a. Okay, so basically you have the integral from a to a which is 1.46 of a of x minus 400. And then of course, it's gonna give you zero. And then you take your calculator again, you go from uh, a to b, that means you go from 1.46 to 3.59, and you have your a of x. Now remember, your a of x is that 450 square root of sine 0.62x, right, minus 400 dx. So you would have to put all that in your calculator. All right, and then when you do that, you should get, I think it's 71.25. And then lastly, you do the same thing, the same integral. You go from a to 4, same thing over here. I'm just going to put uh, a of x minus 400 dx and then when you do that you get 62.33 all right and then you can see that your max value is at the second point here at 3.5 okay so to the nearest whole number find the greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza in the time interval so you would say the greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza in the time interval between A of T, I'm sorry, between A and 4 is 71. And that's it. That's it, guys. But as you can see, it's not very difficult. But you just have to kind of know what to look for. Okay? Uh, if you kind of fine-tune your focus, I mean, these are very, very doable. Okay, but notice that they're gonna ask you the same things over and over again. Okay, so if you if you look at the other videos from the other years, um, you'll see the rate accumulation. They generally ask the same thing. So hopefully, guys, that helped. Um, and that's why I do these videos, guys, because a lot of students they tell me they're helpful, and, and you know, I'm glad it, it does. If it can help you get a four or a five, man, that's that's the best thing. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one.